know how long I've worked at this. Every day I get up, I, I stay within my calorie budget. I, I drink enough water. I, I do all of these things. Look, here's the deal. I just want four pounds. Would you, would you give me four pounds, please? Uh, give me four pounds. Because if you give me four pounds, then, then I'm going to be telling myself that what I'm doing is correct. Okay? All right. Now look, I'm going to get up. I'm going to take some clothes off. I'm going to stand on you. I want you to tell me that what I'm doing is right. Okay? Just, just tell me what I'm doing is right. I need that. I need that validation. I need that confirmation. You have the answers. Look, I want to be in a good mood today. I want to be in a good mood today. I don't want to be in a bad mood. It's all up to you. All right? I'm giving you that complete control. You are going to decide whether I have a good day today. And that could lead to whether or not I have a good week. All right, Scale? All right. I love you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sean, and thank you for watching. Today we're talking about the scale. Yeah? Oh my goodness. The scale, for me, it was really important statistically. Like, I, that first weigh-in was really super important. And so important, in fact, that I wouldn't even start trying to lose weight unless I knew where I was starting. Okay, I understand that. But after that initial start, sometimes it's so difficult to stay away from the scale. What I would do, and what helped me, was not having a scale at home to begin with. So weigh day for me became a special event that required me getting into the car and making a trip to the health department 43 miles away when I first started losing weight because they were the only ones that had a scale that had the capacity to weigh me at over 500 pounds. It became a trip. So it was either that, and then eventually when I had lost enough weight, then it was going to the doctor's office. But it was still a special trip. Now, I'll tell you, if I had a scale in my bathroom, I'm not sure how I would handle that. It would be so tempting to get out of the shower every day and, and simply jump on the scale and see what it tells me. But I knew from past experience in owning a scale how obsessive I might become with having that access to the number. And that's the thing I wanted to talk about today. Things that we do, there's so many different things we do that, that interrupt our positive momentum along this road. So many things. And one of the things we often do is we weigh too often. Now, some of my friends say, well, Sean, you don't understand. That works for me. I wake up every day, I weigh every day, and it sets the tone. It sets the tone for my day. So it, it determines how I'm going to approach my plan for that particular day. Okay. What I want to discuss is something that perhaps uh, you haven't thought about, or maybe if you have, but we're going to dig just a little bit deeper. Okay. What if we shifted our focus away from looking for that number on the scale and we shifted our focus to focusing on the fundamental elements that are, are bringing us results and positive momentum along the way. And why is that important? It's important because when we're stepping on the scale, we're looking for validation and confirmation and we're looking for that from an unreliable source. Now think about that. From an unreliable source. Why is it unreliable? Like there are other things in our life that we would never trust to an unreliable source. And if we had any inkling that the source was unreliable, we wouldn't go to that for confirmation or validation or for whatever reason, right? But when it comes to our weight, and what we're doing specifically to lose weight and take extraordinary care, we're looking for that validation and confirmation from the scale.
but there's a reason why it's an unreliable source because there's a long list of things the scale is taking into account. This inanimate object is taking into account so many different things to determine the number it gives you. I have a list right here. I needed a list. I couldn't remember. All right. The scale takes into account water retention. That's, yeah, obvious. Uh, stress levels. Hormonal issues. Yeah. Body waste. That's true. Seriously. Uh, and there's a few other factors. And the least of which is what you're doing every day. And you're working hard every day. But that's the thing. We, we get on the scale and we don't see the number we want. Automatically, we take it as an attack on what we're doing. Right? We see we get on the scale and maybe it shows a little gain. And we think, oh, that's not right. I've been working my tail off. I've been eating within my calorie budget. I've been exercising every day. What's this all about? And we take it as a direct attack when it's not. When it's not, it's just the scale doing what it does. It's the scale taking into account all of these other factors. So again, we're seeking validation and confirmation from an unreliable source. And here's another thing. If we're jumping on the scale every day, even if we're understanding the influences of all of these other things and how, what it has on the scale, but if we're changing our plan every single day, then how in the world can we develop any kind of consistency in our fundamental elements? It's all about getting consistency. And we've talked about that before, how consistency beats intensity. And it's so true. But when we're allowing the scale to have so much effect on what we're doing, we're not only changing our plan, but a lot of times a bad way in might encourage us to go totally off plan because it discourages us. It has such an emotional impact. Look at how much power we've given the scale in the past. How much, how much control. It's an inanimate object that is, that is influenced by so many different factors, but yet we're going to stand on it and we're going to let it tell us how we're going to feel for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week. Are we going to stay the course? Are we going to get that consistency that's going to bring us results? Then we've got to think about what we're doing every day and realize that our success a lot of times is determined by how we feel each day. And then we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to influence how we feel in a negative or in a positive way? My suggestion, weigh every couple of weeks, weigh every three weeks, weigh every week if you must, but just keep in mind what we've talked about. I know some people that weigh every month and that works for them. If you wrap yourself and embrace your fundamental elements each day, that's your confirmation. That's it. When you hit the pillow at night, knowing that you hit the mark, so to speak, you did what you did, you do what you do, that's that peace and calm and that certainty that you'll achieve and feel great about. That'll keep you going. That'll keep you waking up the next day feeling like, wow, yesterday was incredible. Today's going to be incredible too. All right? Get rid of the scale. Get rid of the scale. I, I, I don't own a scale. I don't ever want to own a scale. Ever. When I weigh in, I'll do it at the doctor's office. They don't charge me. I just show up. I don't even need an appointment. I bet you can make the same arrangement with yours. There's a scale somewhere. Make it a special event when you weigh in. All right? But keep in mind all of these factors that go into that number and realize that what you're doing is good, what you're doing is good enough, and the scale is an unreliable source. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Sean. Thanks.